Have you ever wondered what all those numbers on a yarn label mean? Don't worry, we're going to decode it today and make you an expert. Hello, hello, and welcome to Blah Blah Black Sheep, a weekly yarny podcast where I, Sarah Korth of SEK Handmade, answer your yarny questions. Welcome. I am so glad you're here, and I would love for you to ask a question. There's a link in the show notes below where you can click to fill out a form. It's super simple, where you can ask your question, and that helps me stay super organized so that I can answer all of your questions. Today I'm going to be wearing my Grand Arches shawl. It's kind of a cloudy, gloomy day outside, so I think it's the perfect day for a tank top and a nice open um, shawl. This shawl, one of my biggest issues are shawls that get too long but don't have enough width on them, so I added a little... uh, add on to make this shawl have a really nice wingspan so that you can wrap up in it super easily. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to scrunch up the top just a little bit, wrap it around, and then roll that back under so that those go kind of underneath and the top comes up. And there you go. I'm going to keep it away from my neck a little bit because It's still warm outside because it's still summer. So there you go. I have been thinking about making this again just to have another version of this. This is a really fun speckly yarn, but I wonder if it would really show the texture well if it was in a solid yarn. So let me know if you think if you think you'd like to see it in a solid weight yarn. Um, It is DK weight, which I'll have a lot of in my stash, but I could find something. I can find something. So leave me a comment below. Let me know if you think I should do that. All right. Uh, links to the pattern and to the Aquarius Make website, which is the yarn that this is currently made in, down in the show notes so that you can um, peruse. Uh, this was a collaboration between Fatima and I years ago. So I don't think she still has this exact colorway, but um, she has lots of gorgeous yarn. So, all right, let's answer a question. (laughs) I recently started crocheting and have mostly been practicing my stitches. Now that I have the basics down, I'd like to start an actual pattern. I picked a pattern, but when I went to get the yarn, I got totally overwhelmed. Why are there so many numbers on the yarn labels and what do they mean? Okay, I get this, especially when you go to a big box store and pick up a big box yarn. There's a lot of information on there and some of it's for the store and some of it's very obviously for you and some of it is maybe less obviously for you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some pictures of my yarn labels that I'm talking about and I'm going to put them up here so that you can have a big view of what I'm talking about instead of me trying to like hold and point. (laughs) But I'm going to talk about several different yarn labels here. I have a lot of yarn labels. Um, Some of them have a lot of information on them, and some of them have just a little bit. So I want to talk a little bit about what to expect with different types of yarns and what all of the information means. Okay, so because I'm in the United States, I'm going to start with a big box yarn that is available in the United States. I should say this yarn specifically is discontinued, but this brand is a big brand here in the United States. And so I thought it would be really helpful to show one of their labels because you'll get similar information on all their labels and it'd be good to know what they are. So I have the label from the sweater that I finished. I believe I showed you it last time, maybe two times ago. Um, And this specific yarn, the Comfy Cotton Fetty, is no longer available. However, Comfy Cotton, I believe, is still available, and Lion Brand yarn is absolutely available. So there are lots of numbers that you're going to find on the label here, and I'll put them up here so that you can see them. One of the numbers that you're going to get is the weight 
of the yarn. So this says it's 3.5 ounces or 100 grams is the weight. And then it tells you how many yards and meters are in the grams and ounces. <laughs> so we have kind of American terms and we have um, rest of the world terms because we can't get on board with the metric, I guess. So there are 350 yards and 320 meters. That's the length of the yarn. And that is important to you for two reasons. One, comparing how many yards you get per grams can help you compare how similar your yarn is to the yarn that was used in the pattern. So if you're not going and getting the exact yarn that the designer used, which happens a lot because they discontinue yarns, um, having a comparison of how many yards are in 100 grams can help you kind of compare how similar weight of yarn the yarns are that you're substituting out. I have a whole series on yarn substitution that I'll link below for you. Um, so that number is a good comparison for yarn substitution, but also if you need, oh gosh, oh gosh, if you need, uh, let's say a, th a thousand, let's say a thousand yards for a top that you're making, and this has 350 yards in it, Two of these would be 700 yards. Three of these, oh gosh, math and I. Uh, let's see, 700 plus three would be 1,050. So you would need three balls of this yarn to get to 1,000 yards. So you're not just gonna walk into a yarn store I mean, you might, depending on how many yards you need, but you're probably not just going to walk in if you're making a bigger project and just pick up one ball of yarn and be like, done. You might need multiple balls and knowing how many yards are in each ball or skein or hank is going to help you to know what, uh, how many balls to buy. The next number on here is the... Uh, fiber content. So this yarn is 50% acrylic and 50% cotton. That's listed in two different languages. Again, um, just to be inclusive um, of people who don't speak English, uh, but you don't need to, to know both of those. They're the same thing. So that's just telling you how much of each type of fiber is in your yarn depending on if you have a sensitivity to something or again, you're substituting yarns, substituting for wildly different fibers can be a little tricky. So just knowing that just helps you to know what's in your yarn. Ultimately, um, especially as a beginner, that's not the most important um, number on the yarn label. Next on the Lion brand and a lot of big box yarns. Yeah, I'm looking, I got a Hobie skein here too. And the Hobie skein also has this. It's a little ball of yarn and it has the number three in it. This is just a way with symbols of denoting the weights of the yarn. So like a one is a fingering, a two is a sport weight, a three is a DK, a four is a worsted, a five is a bulky, uh, and a six is a super bulky. Now, they also, this one also says light. So they're saying that this is on the light side of DK, which I agree, this was a pretty, uh, fine yarn for a DK, but, and we can talk about, we can go way in depth with yarn weights a different day, but you know, yarn weights run a spectrum. And so that can give you an idea. Yeah. Uh, if you were, <laughs> if your pattern calls for like a uh, worsted weight yarn, you're looking for a four inside that little skein of yarn symbol. Then we've got knitting needle and a crochet hook. And they're saying they're giving you a specific hook and needle that they suggest. And then they're telling you that in a four by four inch or a 10 by 10 centimeter swatch, 
you should get a certain number of stitches and a certain number of rows. Let me tell you, that number, to moi, is the most worthless number on here. You don't need that. You do not have to use that hook or those needles with that yarn. And you're going for the designer's gauge, not the yarn label's gauge. So I suppose, no, no, no. I think it's worthless. I'm going out on a limb. I'm saying what it is. You can disagree with me. <laughs> I welcome people who respectfully disagree. Um, but I think that information is just worthless. So what if you can make the gauge on the yarn label? <laughs> who cares? Okay. Then not numbers, but it has some washing instructions. Let me tell you, I have to look up what these mean every time. Uh, there's an A in a circle. No idea what that means. Maybe I'll look it up and put it over there. Um, no ironing. Definitely no ironing. This has acrylic in it. Acrylic is plastic. If you iron it, you will melt it. <laughs> so then you've got a few numbers that look very like store officially, but not all of them are just for the store. There are a couple over here that I want you to pay attention to. So we've got the skew, which obviously it, you don't need that. That's just for like, boop, buying your yarn. But um, we also have an article number, a color number, and a lot number. You do not need the article number. The color number is really helpful because there are some yarn lines that have colors that look incredibly similar. And especially when you're getting into like blacks and navies, if they've got like a really deep navy, especially in the light of a big box store or any artificial light, they can look incredibly similar and you can get home with like half your project in a navy and half your project in a black and you don't want that. So if you are having trouble, <clears throat> excuse me, comparing colors, look at that number. This is 204. So if there was like a 206 that looked incredibly similar, I want to make sure I get either all 204 or all 206 so that you know. Also then the color number, color name obviously could give you similar information, but you know, sometimes they'll have some, sometimes names won't be listed. I'm trying to think if this guy has, I think this is an example of this. Yeah, but it's color is just 12. There's no name to this on the label. I think there was a name on the website, but not on the label. So if I walked into a store, which you can't buy Hobie yarn here in the United States, and I don't know if they have actual brick and mortars other places, but maybe, um, there would be no color. So you couldn't compare just the color name, black and navy. You'd have to look at the actual color number. So, um, and then there is the lot number. Lot number feels very like, I don't need to know that, but let me tell you, yes, you do. I thought for the longest time that if it was a big box dye, the lot number didn't matter because they had machines that dyed stuff, right? So how, like, that seems like it would have to be consistent because it's robots, right? Um, no, I have a sweater. I'll see if I can find a picture. I made a sweater in Lion Brand yarn. I uh, bought, I think what I did was I had some of the yarn in my stash and then, you know, you know me, I already had some of the yarn and then I found a project I wanted to do. It was a test for this um, knitting pattern. And so I didn't have enough yarn, so I went back and I bought more yarn. But it had been like months since I had purchased the first bit, so they did not have the same dye lot. And I thought, it'll be fine. And even as I was knitting, I thought it was fine. And then I took my pictures and I was like, oh, mm -hmm. you can definitely see where <laughs> the new and the old yarn is. So you want to be sure that if you are purchasing multiple skeins of yarn, that they all have the same dye lot number so that you make sure that your skeins match. That simply means they were all dyed together and that then they should match. Then I wanted to talk about a couple labels of things that you'll often find in a, like a local yarn shop situation because they tend to be kind of different. They're very popular 
kind of transition yarns. When people start out, a lot of times they start in the big box because it's easy and accessible, but as you improve your skills, you feel like, oh, now I can use the fancier yarn. I'm good enough. Let me tell you, lies. You can start with the fancy yarn. I really encourage my students to do it. It, um, it changes your whole experience but I'll get off my soapbox because that's not what we're talking about today. The first one I want to talk about is a Plymouth yarn. Plymouth yarn has significantly fewer numbers on it than the, um, the big box stores. So for this, on the front, it tells you what the fiber content is. 100% superwash fine merino wool. That's it. Then on the back, you can see so many fewer numbers. They have a suggested needle and um, how many stitches per inch. Um, this is, you'll notice, I could get on a whole nother soapbox here, but you will notice that as your yarns get fancier, if they list a, a tool, I guess, they'll list knitting and not crochet. Can you see why I could get on a soapbox? Anywho, uh, again, I think that's kind of useless information anyway, so we'll let it slide. Um, and then they have how many yards per 100 grams? And Plymouth Yarn, which is a US yarn company, doesn't even have meters and ounces. So there you go. They do, however, have a color number and a lot number. So again, you're going to want to get A, all the same color, and B, all the same dye lot. Another yarn that I think is a very popular transition, transition yarn for people is Malabrigo. And Malabrigo, again, does not have a lot of um, information. They have that it's a worsted weight yarn. They just flat out say that they identi identify this as worsted. Um, and this is their Rios, but all of their, all of their labels? I'm going to go out on a limb and say yes, all of their labels look the same. And so you'll find uh, the name of the yarn base. Uh, the little hang tag is the uh, colorway, um, and then it'll say the weight of the yarn base, so worsted, and then they give you approximately 210 yards or 192 meters. I think it's interesting that they say approximate. I think everyone should say approximate because the reality is uh, if you weigh all of your uh, yarn before you start stitching, which I do as a designer, you will see that they are they don't all have exactly what they say they have not for nefarious reasons they just don't cuz nobody's perfect <laughs> even machines and they just say per 100 grams then they give a gauge in 4 inches and an ns or needle size um, and then they say it's 100% superwash merino. They have stuff on the back, but it's all care instructions. Now, you will notice that this is missing a dye lot. Malabrigo does not dye lot their yarns. You know me, I'm obsessed with Malabrigo. They got all the bold colors for me. <laughs> but uh, I like to take out a bunch of the skeins and kind of lay them down and see which ones match. And then ask if you can take the skeins out and just compare them because uh, you'll you'll notice some differences even if they did all come from the same bag. So that's my two cents on how to get more even dye lots uh, with Malabrigo yarn. Now, my first... Uh, gateway yarn was Blue Sky. And I work with them. I love them as people and I love their yarn. So let's take a look at their label. The front of their label has no numbers. It just tells you what the yarn is and what weight it is. Then on the back, they got a whole bunch of numbers. <laughs> they have their skew numbers. You don't need that. But then this is a 50 gram or no, this is a 50 gram skein. And so then they tell you that it's 218 yards or 200 meters. Uh, then they've got their fiber content right underneath that, which is 100% fine Highland wool. Now, 
we've got, if you turn the label the other way, <laughs> you've got a whole bunch more numbers. Again, similar things to what we've seen before. They've got a lot number. That's the die lot. You want to um, sync those up. You want them all to be the same. Uh, a color number and a name. They've got a suggested needle size and a suggested gauge. Um, so there you go. That's all, so all very similar numbers. It just looks a bit different in the um, in the different skeins. So there you go. That's what they all mean. Depending, you know, when you get into true, like real hand dyed, small dyers, so it's one person uh, dyeing yarn, they will tend to give even less information. There's often no dye lots in those because, you know, they're not machines and it's just that one person making the things. Um, what else? Do, oh, they definitely, uh, I know they do this because they support my feelings. <laughs> that it's a waste to give a gauge because gauge doesn't really matter. And so they often don't have that. Uh, they'll often just have a color name, a base name, uh, yards, ounces, grams, meters, any mixture of those, depending on where you're getting them from. Often they'll just be whatever is most common in their area. So if you're getting yarn from someplace that uses, you know, metrics, it'll be ounces and meters. If you're using some place that is in the United States, it'll be yards and grams. Uh, Google is great for converting those things. <laughs> so there's that. All right. I hope that you found that helpful. I hope that demystifies some of those numbers and helps you know what you need and what is just like, don't worry about it. So there you go. I have some announcements and some small business and they kind of go together. Okay. So small businesses and announcements are kind of going to mold all into one today, yesterday, or this last week, not, not yesterday. When you see this, this last weekend was the Appleton arts festival. I was so excited. Uh, we got home from visiting my dad on Saturday and Saturday night I was like I must go tomorrow <clears throat> it was lovely it was hot but um, it was just me myself and I which after a week of having my nephew with us and then a week of being with my whole entire side of the family it was nice to just do whatever the heck I wanted to and only talk to the people I wanted to <laughs> And I'll have to provide any care for anyone. So um, I went to the art festival. I met a bunch of great artists. I saw some of my favorite artsy people. And I want to share with you about them and things that I purchased so that you can check them out too. So I have been drinking from a new mug. I was very excited when I saw this. I have nothing like this. Nothing in black and white, which is silly to me. So this is by Jan Deemer's Pottery. Am I saying that right? Who knows? Um, but this is the first time I'm drinking out of it. I really like it so far. Um, I will I will link to all of these people's websites down below so that you don't have to search them out and so that I can terribly pronounce all of their names and you don't have to try to figure out how that's spelled based on my terrible pronunciation. <laughs> the second thing that I'm currently using and wearing are these earrings. I thought these were so fun. Guys, I love the look of stained glass and there were several stained glass artists there, but rightfully so. Stained glass is expensive and so I did not use uh, any of my budget to buy actual stained glass, but I did buy these earrings and they're just a piece of like, I would assume kind of leftover stained glass, which I love using up little pieces, but it's got the black outline and then that glass is iridescent. <gasps> it's so fun. It's so fun. They are a little heavier than earrings that I'm used to wearing, but I don't feel... I don't feel like they're too bad. I don't know that I would wear them all day long, but I'm kind of a person who gets home and is like 
put on the yoga pants, take off all the jewelry. And so I could probably wear them for the day and be fine. Um, and those are by Aquarius Encounters. And they have all sorts of stuff. They have more jewelry. They have full uh, stained glass pieces. So lots of fun stuff to look at there. So then uh, the first piece that I purchased was this. I will say the artists were very good this year, I felt like at, um, well, I shouldn't say everybody because there were definitely some artists that I walked into their booths and I was like, hey, and they're like, um, which is fine. Everybody has a different level of uh, comfort with talking to strangers, but there were quite a few artists who are really good at uh, not just talking to people, but like sharing their process. And I must confess that this artist did an amazing job. And when I wear these, I will go look up what she told me. I just remember it was a super cool process that she takes natural things, things out of nature, and she covers them in copper somehow. And so these are oak leaves. I'm going to wear these all fall long. She was super sweet. Her process sounded so cool. And, um, and I just love it. It's unique and happy to smell happy to support a small business. One of my favorite artists was there. Her name is Dory Patrick. I saw her twice last year. Um, I was in uh, visiting my family and I saw her at the Waukee Arts Festival. And then I told her, then she told me she was going to be in Appleton the next weekend. And I ended up seeing her again. We chit chatted. Her partner was there. Um, he knits. And so we chit chatted about fiber for a while. I poked back into her booth. They both recognized me. He was like, Hey, don't you do something with fiber? They are just the sweetest. So I grabbed this guy who is bold, but I really like it. So, um, very fun and pretty completely not a print. A lot of the things I have of hers are just prints of hers, but this is a full original art piece. Let's see. What do I have of hers? I feel like I have a couple things up here. Oh, this is hers, which you, I don't know if you can see what it says, but it says, keep looking where the light pours in. And then this is hers too. And this is a full original. So I'm really excited about this, but then separately I purchased so this is Dory Patrick. Separately, I purchased this guy. And I have to say, I've been eyeing this stuff for a while. Um, but it's kind of expensive. But I I know I get why. It's it's amazing her process. So this is by uh Julia H Studios, and she makes these 3D flowers all out of paint. It is quite the process. If nothing else, you should definitely go follow her on Instagram to see her full process. So I bought this towards the beginning of the art festival, and this was maybe the very last thing I purchased. But look at how well they go together. So I'm definitely going to hang those two next to each other. Next week, I'll have to... I'm going to say it now. Next week, I'm going to show you where I hung everything so that I have to get it put up by next week. <laughs> So then I talked to this wonderful artist who is uh, Carrie Jamison and her business is called Carrie Jamison Art. She did an amazing job of telling about her process. She does acrylic paint for the backgrounds. Then she goes in with pencil for all the gray. And then she comes over again on top with more acrylic paint to paint the brightly colored things. She had lots of really fun, bold art, lots of bird art. <clears throat> Excuse me. I love a bluebird. Bluebirds represent finding your own happiness. And so I couldn't resist. This is a print on a, a wooden block. So, um, it was, it was a, a more reasonable price than her actual, like, um, original painting paintings. Cause whoo, I can only imagine the hours and hours it must take her to make these. So pricey, but reasonable. So that was a lot of fun. I can't wait to find a place to hang that. And then another artist that I really liked, but 
her bigger things were definitely out of my price range. So I enjoyed that she had this little piece. She had some ornaments. This is Alexander Ceramics. And how gorgeous is that? The poppies. So I don't, I'm not going to wait and put this on my Christmas tree. I'm going to hang it up somewhere. I don't know if I'm going to hang it from its red hanger on the wall or if I'm just going to put like, I, I thought about just getting a nail hanging it on a nail and then maybe gluing something pretty to the front of it, like a button or a bead or something so that it looks pretty and not like it's just hanging on a nail. So that is Alexander Ceramics. And then this lady, you guys, she was a hoot. Uh, she was so sweet. So, oh, I don't, oh, by Rach. So this is Gourd just jewelry. She grows gourds in her backyard. She processes them into these lightweight earrings. She cuts the gourd. She 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 explained her whole process. She cuts the gourd. Well, she grows the gourds. She dries them. She cuts them into uh, big shapes. Then she sands them down to the specific shape that she wants. Then she paints them and seals them. And they are just so fun and pretty. She had lots of really uh, neat um, paint colorings. I thought I'd wear these a lot, though, cut with the blues and greens there. So that was fun. And and I got a pair for my mother-in-law for Christmas, too, which is so fun. Okay, then last but not least, I picked up a couple of things from Resin Studios. I walked by this place last year and was like, oh, that's so pretty. And then I was like, no, I'd spent too much money. And so this year I texted Brian, who was at home, and I was like, what, what do you think about this for the yard? And he was like, yeah, sure, that's great. So um, I got this piece for our front yard. It's a rainbow. And it's got a stake. It's got a little holder here. And then it's got a stake so we can put it in the ground and have some bright prettiness in our front yard. Isn't that amazing? Um, I'll have to take a picture and show you it outside. I also am kind of hope, I'm a little nervous. I have to debate where to put this because in our front front, we have rocks. And I would be so sad if a big wind came and knocked it over and shattered it because it fell on rocks. So I gotta think about where I'm gonna put it. I'd love to put it in the front yard, but Ugh, rocks. Do not put rocks in your front yard unless you live in a rocky place. Right, Weston? You know what I'm talking about. Yeah. yeah you know what I'm talking about. Um, so I'm going to have to find a place to put that where it'll be safe. But then, at, of course, as I was standing by the checkout, they had all these cute little tiny earrings. And they're just like little pieces of, of glass. And I thought, you know, some days I just want to throw in like a tiny earring. And I thought those would be perfect. They're a fun, pretty color. Complimentary, but each unique. So, so there you go. That's what I did at the art festival. It was so much fun. I got to talk to Adrian of Mandrel Works. I got to talk to Rin of uh, Cheeky Ceramics. Rin and I have done a, uh, a swap. And um, I made them a cowl. Um, a Nolan cowl and they are going to make me a memorial mug with my two dogs that passed on it. So I got to give them their cowl. Yes. I was like, you can't wear it today. It's way too hot, but I'm sure they have some fall markets and our farmer's market, which they are vending at every other week, um, is goes all the way through October, I think. So it get, it'll it'll get there. It'll get chilly some of those mornings. So I hope that they'll be able to wear it and enjoy it. Um, Rin was so excited about it. Uh, they were like, this is just the color I wanted, which is fantastic because I made it out of a yarn that I got in a mystery kit or a mystery package that wasn't my, wasn't my cup of tea. So it's their cup of tea and perfect. Anyways, that's all I have for you announcements. Oh, I will say I have been in contact with um, Tanya of Cornbread and Honey about our collaboration for the Mystery Cow that will be going on in October. We've talked about when pre-orders will need to be done by, which is like end of August, which I cannot believe that it'll be August tomorrow 
when this goes out. Um, and I'm going to contact her today and I'm going to get a solid number for the yarn kits uh, so that you can start budgeting if you want to buy a kit from her. Highly recommend. She has come up with four really stunning kits. So I'm going to reach out her to her today so that you can be prepared and I'll let you know next week uh, what the final price of those kits will be. So thank you so much for joining me today. I would love it if you would like this video, subscribe, comment, do all the things. Uh, it helps our community grow. I appreciate you so, so much. I hope you have an amazing week. We'll see you back here next week and happy crafting.